Hello, I'm Ruth McDonald and I'm Chair of Food Science and Human Nutrition at Iowa State University and I'm a Best Food Facts expert. So there's been a lot of questions about what is high fructose corn syrup and how does it affect my health. So I'd just like to talk a little bit about what the chemistry is behind high fructose corn syrup and how it gets into our food supply. So we know that corn has primarily a lot of carbohydrate, which is in the form of starch. Starch is made up of glucose, which is a carbohydrate, linked together by bonds in a series of chains. These links of glucose branch off and form a very large molecule. So this is what starch is made up of chemically. Starch is very similar to the compound in our body where we store glucose called glycogen. It's very similar in structure, glucose molecules all linked together uh, by bonds. So in order to make high fructose corn syrup, the starch molecule made up of all of the glucose is, undergoes an enzymatic reaction where some of the glucose is converted into fructose. Now to understand that, we have to remember that Glucose, or the molecule of glucose, is comprised of the six carbons linked together in a six-membered ring. So that's what glucose looks like in a structure. The molecule fructose has the same number of carbons, except they're linked together a little bit differently. So there's a five-member ring instead of a six-membered ring. The same number of carbons are there, they're just structured differently. So one of the things that happens when you do that is that the, the taste in our mouth is sweeter. So fructose is a little sweeter than glucose. So by converting some of the glucose and breaking it apart in the chain, the starch that we started out with from the corn becomes a mixture, not just, it doesn't have just glucose, it has a mixture of glucose and fructose together. So the, the amount of the glucose and fructose is about in the ratio of 45 to 55 percent of the molecules in the high fructose corn syrup. 45 percent glucose, 55 percent fructose. The similar uh, structure is found in what we call table sugar. Table sugar is a mixture of glucose and fructose linked together by a bond. So glucose linked together with fructose equals sugar. The amount of glucose and fructose in sugar is about 50% to 50%. So very similar to the ratio of the amount of glucose and fructose that's in high fructose corn syrup. So there isn't a lot of difference structurally between high fructose corn syrup and table sugar. So the next question that people ask is, well, what happens when I eat high fructose corn syrup? What happens when I eat glucose and fructose, basically? When we eat glucose and fructose, no matter whether it's coming from high fructose corn syrup, whether it's coming from sugar, another thing that has fructose and glucose in it would be honey. Honey has about the same amount of glucose and fructose as sugar. Something like agave syrup, which is sort of popular right now, has actually more like 70% fructose and 30% glucose, so it's higher in glucose or in fructose than is high fructose corn syrup because it comes from a plant source and that's where a lot of fructose is found in nature. So when we look at what happens to glucose and fructose when we eat it, when we consume these uh, compounds, whether they be linked together in the fructose um, and glucose bonds and sugar or whether they be part of the high fructose corn syrup, they enter into our digestive tract and are absorbed across the intestine and go mainly to the liver. So most of the carbohydrate, or actually all of the carbohydrate that we absorb from our diet will stop by the liver first. 
In our body, we don't have a real functional role for fructose. We do have a functional role for glucose. So there are systems in place when these uh, molecules are absorbed from the intestine and they go to the liver. There are systems in place where you convert those into molecules that your body uses. So at the liver, there are a series of enzymes and you can start with glucose or you can start with fructose and they enter into the same pathway and ultimately will be converted into different things. So one of the things that can happen is that the glucose can be released out into the blood and circulate around to the various tissues of the body and used for energy. So a majority of the glucose that we consume converted into fructose ends up being used by the rest of the body. Some of it will be stored as glycogen. Glycogen is that molecule that we talked about over here that looks like starch. It's the storage form of glucose in our body. A little bit will be used for glycogen. A little bit will be converted into something called glycerol, which is used in fat uh, metabolism, things like triacylglycerols or triglycerides. And then some of it will be used to make energy. So the point of the biochemical pathway for our body is that whether we consume glucose or fructose, the body likes to convert it all into a form that it can use either for energy, stored as fat, or released as glucose, which then can go into the rest of the body and can be used for um, energy, can be used to make glycogen, or it could be stored as fat, which is the primary way that we store excess calories in our body. So the bottom line of all of this is that when we eat high fructose corn syrup, when we eat sugar, when we eat honey, we're getting glucose and fructose. The body uses those the same way. It doesn't change whether it comes from any of those sources. And we use that for our body to make energy or to stir, store that energy for later use. Now, there's a lot of controversy in the diet about what, about in, the, in, our, um, in people's minds about whether we should have high fructose corn syrup, whether it's healthy, whether it's not. And as a nutritionist, the point is that anything that contains calories needs to be consumed in moderation with energy expenditure. So a diet that's very high in high fructose corn syrup or very high in sugar or very high in honey or in agave nectar, anything that contributes a lot of simple carbohydrates to the diet needs to be consumed in moderation. But it doesn't really have a different chemical response in your body, whether it comes from high fructose corn syrup or whether it comes from sugar.